Hello and welcome to another review on rcmodelreviews.com. Today I'm going to be looking at this. This is the J DSM J 2.4 GHz frequency hopping system from JR. Now, this review is a bit late because JR have pretty much decided to replace the system with a new DMSS, the Dual Modulation Spread Spectrum System, which is pretty much the same except it uses different hardware and has telemetry. But there are a lot of people out there who have already got DSMJ and it's still on the market and it's still, in my opinion, a better alternative than DSM2. So until JR bring out modules with DS DMSS in them for the high-end models of their radios, this is still a very practical option for JR users. And let's have a look at how it performs. Okay, here's our spectrum analyzer. There's the background noise at a very, very low level. What I've got here is a JR11X. I'll be turning that on. It has a DSM2 module in it at the moment. So first of all, we'll look at the standard DSM2 output. Here we go. You notice quickly, we have a spike, another spike down here. So there's the two frequency allocations the DSM2's done. In this case, they're quite widely spaced, which is very good. Not always the case though. Um, there we go. So that is your typical DSM2. Now, if both of these peaks of energy were actually obliterated by interference, then your DSM-2 system would be falling from the sky and you would be crying in your cup of coffee. So that's DSM-2. Now what I'm going to do is turn that off. It takes a while for this to decay, remember. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to remove the DSM-2 module from this DSM or this JR11X transmitter. And I'm going to take out the DSMJ module, which of course is just a plug-in replacement because the transmitter I'm using is module based. Now, it plugs in the back as you would expect. Very little difference there. Now, right, we're back to a background noise situation here. I'm going to turn on the JR11X and I'm going to say transmit. And now you'll notice See the peaks appearing across the entire band because this is the DMSJ system, the frequency hopping system. So now you'll notice that the Spectrum or the, the JR system is using the entire band and that's really, really good because it means that if there is a big blob of interference that takes up this much of the band, you can still use the rest. If there's this much taken up, you can still use the rest. In fact, even if there's only a tiny window in the band, enough of the signal will get through to allow you to control your model. And that's the big difference between DSM-2 and DSM-J. It's the amount of the band it uses and therefore the amount of redundancy you have in terms of band use. That's brilliant. Now, the system comes, the DSM-J system here comes with a seven channel receiver. This is the little seven channel with satellite. Okay, now let's take a look at how well this thing performs in terms of linking up and relinking. Now here it is, it's all turned off at the moment. I'll turn it on. Watch this little LED in here. It'll light up when the bind is complete. There we go. It was a bit, that was about a second, I think, just under a second. Just try it again. Turn it off. Turn it on. Yep. Probably about three quarters of a second before it's all linked up and, and working. Now, it's pretty good. Pretty good indeed. Now, the servo movement is quite smooth. The latency seems very low. It's it's a very nice little system. Now, we've got some really severe testing conditions here for the DSMJ system. You notice that you can't even see the DSMJ system on the spectrum anymore. It's, it's basically right down on the noise level because I have, uh, I've got the transmitter in range test mode and it is a greater distance from the receiver than the video sender. The video sender here is quite close. So the video signal is far greater in intensity than the transmitter signal. You know, you can't even see the transmitter signal on the spectrum analyzer. And here is the servo that I've got connected up to the receiver. And look at this. That's still working perfectly. Even with this huge amount of noise on the band generated by the video sender, DSMJ is able to cut through that because it's able to use this part of the band. Even though we only have a tiny little bit of signal over there, it's enough for the DSMJ to pick it up because it's free, oops, just fallen off. It's free from the interfering part of the, or the part of the band with the interference on it. That is how DSMJ works and it works very well. I'm, I really wish that Horizon had chosen to upgrade the DSM2 to DSMJ because I think there'd be a lot fewer people flying Spectrum who were falling out of the sky for unexplained reasons. And now that's it for this little test. Very soon I hope to have a DMSS system from JR to review because if it's half as good as the DSMJ, it will be a winner. But in the meantime, if you're buying JR in America, you only have the choice of DSM2 
or DSM-2. And if you're buying outside of the USA, you can at least get DSM-J, but it does look like it's going to be a bit of a dead end now that DMSS has been announced. Your choice, I just bring you the facts, I show you how stuff works and whether it works on RC Model Reviews.